One of the most underrated tools in Final Cut Pro. So today I'm going to show you three creative ways to use them, including putting titles behind yourself. I'll show you how to clone yourself in the same shot and how to create super smooth transitions. And the best thing is they're actually really fun and easy to make. And thanks to Motion VFX for sponsoring this video. Okay, here we are inside Final Cut Pro. And the first thing I wanna show you is how to add that text behind yourself. You can use it in all sorts of different contexts. It comes in really handy. So this is a great trick to know. So I'm just gonna start off with the clip where I'm talking. I'm just gonna go in and out, drop that onto my timeline. Okay, so I'm going to use a title that I got from Motion VFX and a bit more on them later. But for now, I'm just gonna drag and drop this title into my timeline. There it is. I'm just gonna retitle it self like we had in the intro. Now, if I move this over on the screen, obviously it's gonna cover me, but the idea is that I want it to be behind my head. So it looks like it's an element within the frame. So to do that, this is where masking comes in. I'm just gonna temporarily hide this so it's out of the way, just with V on the keyboard. So that's hidden. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my effects tab just here. I'm just gonna make sure all video and audio is selected. And then I'm gonna search for mask. Here you've got a whole bunch of different options when it comes to masking, but the main one we're gonna focus on is the the magnetic mask. And this is one of the easiest masks to use in Final Cut Pro. So all you do is click and drag and drag it over your screen, your preview window. And as you can see, you can highlight the object that you want to mask. In my case, it's me, I want to mask myself. So I'm just gonna get it to, there's a nice bit of coverage. As you can see, as you move it around, you're gonna get different areas of the frame covered. So I just wanna make sure I'm well covered. That looks pretty good there and let go. And this is gonna create this selection around me. Now I just wanna make sure it knows exactly what I want it to select. It usually does a great job by itself, but just to further enhance it, I'm just gonna use this little pipette tool and just click a couple more spots on myself just to make sure that it knows I want it to select me, nothing behind me. And as you can see, sometimes it might deselect parts of you. So just make sure those parts that you want to select are selected. I might even just include this bit of wooden table just so it doesn't get messed up. Now that I'm fully selected, I'm just gonna hit this analyze button. Just click on that. And then in real time, you'll see it start to analyze your footage. And as you can see, it's doing a really good job of making sure I'm staying selected. The background isn't being selected, even when I point up, that kind of stuff. So just let it do its thing, won't take long at all. And now that that's complete, we have our mask. Now, if I press done here, it's gonna cut out the background. Now this actually isn't what we're looking for because if I turn my title back on with a V, it's still over the top of me and we've lost the background. So that's not what we want. So I'm just gonna hide this again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this clip. Just hold down option and then click and drag your clip up. And just like that, it's gonna create a duplicate of the same clip. So now you've got two versions of the same thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to our bottom clip and then I'm gonna turn the magnetic mask off in our inspector window. Just turn it off. Now that'll bring back our background. And what it's done is the clip which has no background is now above our title. So if I turn the title back on, as you can see, it's behind us. Let's just turn this bottom clip background layer back on. And now we have our title completely behind us, cut out perfectly. And it literally looks like it's part of the frame. So it's that easy, it's super straightforward. I'm just gonna move this so I can read it a little bit more like so. And then if we play that back, that honestly looks perfect. And you saw how easy that was. It takes literally like a, a minute or two. Now next I wanna show you how you can clone yourself like I did in that first shot. A lot of people are doing that on social media these days, it's really popular. But before we do, I just wanna quickly talk about the sponsor Motion VFX. I've been using their Design Studio subscription and it's honestly transformed how I edit in Final Cut. You get access to a huge library of high-end titles, transitions, graphics, and effects. And the best part is it all works seamlessly inside Final Cut through their M extension plugin. One of my favorite features in Design Studio is the AI captions tool. It lets you automatically generate and stylize subtitles directly inside Final Cut, which saves me a ton of time, especially for short form content. Let me show you how it works inside the Final Cut plugin. If we go here to M elements, as you can see, We've got everything, again, you can think of. Over 900 different transitions that you can just drag and drop into your projects. You've got thousands of typography elements. You've got generators, modules, overlay effects, camera movements, background, social media icons, and more. There's so many things that you can get within a Motion VFX subscription. This has honestly transformed how I use Final Cut Pro. You can kind of think of it as down here, you've got your transitions and effects tabs that have a whole bunch of native effects that come with Final Cut Pro, but this gives you just thousands and thousands of more high quality effects and transitions. It's as easy as dragging and dropping within your project. So 
I'll leave a link to Motion VFX down in the description below. I highly recommend checking it out if you're wanting to level up your content. Okay, with that said, let's move on to cloning myself. So if I open up my clip inspector, the first thing to do is film yourself as many times as you want to clone yourself. So for me, I wanted to clone myself three times. So I've filmed three different clips. So obviously we've got the first clip, where it's just me. Then I've got the second clip where it's just me. So I'm just typing on my iPad, iPad in the background here and then turning around and talking to the camera. And then I moved on to my third clip here, which is where I do that transition wipe. So what you wanna do is basically layer your different clips on top of each other. So I've got my first clip here and I'm gonna layer on my second clip of me turning around and talking to the camera. I'm gonna put that on top. And then my final clip where I'm doing the transition wipe and I add that into my timeline as well, just on top. Now I wanna line up each clip so that I'm talking in sequence. So I just want to drag this clip out to about here and here because that's where I finish talking there. And that's where I want to start talking in my second clip. So I'm going to line that up here and then drag that out. And my final clip, I start talking here. So I want to start that at the end of where I finish talking in my second clip, drag that out. So now you can see I've got me talking in the first clip up to here then me talking in the second clip up to here and then me talking in the third clip up to the transition. Okay, so I'm just going to hide these top two clips, go back to our original and then I'm going to go back to my original original magnetic mask. And we can see because we've extended the clip, it actually hasn't analyzed any of this new section. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna go back to a part of the clip where it was analyzed and then just hit analyze again. This is just gonna finish off analyzing the rest of the clip because we want the entire clip to be masked. So we're just gonna give that a few seconds to analyze and that is done. So let's just hit done. Now, not much has changed yet, but what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this clip out the entire length so that the lengths of the two clips match. Turn it back on. Now, what's happening is because this clip is on top, we're having the same issue as what we did with the original title. So I'm just gonna drag this underneath our masked clip. And now, just like that, I've cloned myself and I've got two versions of myself in the same video. I might even just move that out a little bit just to give it a bit more breathing room. And then if we play that back, that looks perfect. Now for the final clip, this one here. Now for this one, we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna create another mask. Let's just go back, type in magnetic, and we've got a magnetic mask. I'm just gonna drag that over myself. This one will be a little bit more tricky because there's more black down here. And so it has a harder time picking up where the ending is. Once again, it's just a matter of clicking in the spots where we want our mask to be selected. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just hit analyze, see how it goes. Okay, now that is done. And as you can see, it's it's done an okay job for some of it, but a terrible job for the rest of it. So as we go out of frame, that's doing a perfect job. That's exactly what we want. It's done a really smooth mask. But then towards the end, especially when I move my hand across the camera, it starts to get a little bit confused as to what it's meant to be masking. So it's it's picking up that chair for some reason and just blurring the mask. So look, that's fine for what we want to do for the first half of the clip. So let's just hit done. And now for that first part of the clip, we've actually achieved what we wanted to achieve. So it looks like there's a third version of me that pops into the frame and starts the wipe, but obviously that's not looking right. So, so far for all intents and purposes, we've achieved our second result. We've created a triple cloning of the same person. So let's move on to the final transition effect where I wipe my hand across the screen. So this one is the most manually intensive, but you can do some really cool transitions with this effect. So I'm actually gonna duplicate this clip again and move it up above my other clip. I'm gonna leave it in the same position. We don't want that to change, but I'm gonna delete the magnetic mask from this particular clip. So now we just left it with the original clip that we had at the start. I'm just gonna shorten this clip up to where we want the transition to start. So I would say we want it to start right here. Now what I'm gonna do is basically, I wanna create a mask around my hand as it wipes across the screen. So that as my hand wipes across, the background is gonna be taken away so that I can fill that space with a new clip. So in order to do that, I'm just going to use a different type of mask. I'm gonna type in mask into the effects tab again. This time we're gonna use a draw mask. Now I'm gonna drag this onto my clip, not onto the preview. And then you're gonna see where it's gonna say, click to add a control point. And you've got this pen tool that appears. So I basically wanna create a shape around my hand. So I'm gonna click outside our preview frame and then just do a rough shape down the side of my hand and back up 
around like so. This side doesn't have to be neat, just this side. It'll all make sense in a second, trust me. Now the problem is if I move the frame left or right, this mask is gonna stay in the exact same position. So we wanna animate the mask so that it moves with the hand. And that is essentially what the magnetic mask is doing automatically. But because this is quite a blurry element in the frame, we're gonna to have to do it manually. But fear not, it's actually fairly straightforward. We're gonna go up to the inspector window and where it says control points. So we've got 13 control points. I'm just gonna make sure that's minimized and then click this little button here to add a keyframe. Now, anytime I move a frame and then move a control point, it's gonna add a new keyframe for me. So basically now what I have to do is every time I move a frame, I just wanna move my entire mask so that it stays in the same shape as my hand moving across the screen. So I'm just gonna move literally one frame at a time. This is a little bit tedious, so you can see why it's preferable to use the magnetic mask if you can. But sometimes if you've got really unique shapes or ones that don't work so well with the magnetic mask, then this draw mask is the next best thing. So I'm just gonna go through it and speed it up so that you have to watch me do it in real time. Okay, so we have now finished the mask. And as you can see, it's looking fairly smooth as we move across and it's revealing that background that we've created. I'll play it back in real time. Looks fairly smooth. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of a feather as well, just because this line on the hand is actually blurry. So I'm just gonna go up here to feather, just blur it up a little bit. Can't tell too much from the frame. But what I'm gonna do now is load in my other clip that I wanna to transition to, which is this one. So I'm just gonna drag that into our timeline and make sure it's beneath our mask clip, just like that. And we wanna make sure this stays within that frame as well. So it's the same length. Now if I play this back, just like that, we've got a perfect transition. And it's really straightforward, really easy. You can use combinations of these different types of masking techniques to create some really creative and interesting shots. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you've got any questions. Make sure you check out Motion VFX. And if you wanna learn more about Funnel Cut Pro, then I've got a heap more videos right here that you can check out and go through your own pace.